Good morning, friends. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona, and I welcome you to this televised liturgy. Good morning, everyone. My, my name is Father Bill Coolis, and I'm here for us today at St. Mary's Parish in Winona to celebrate with all and a special welcome to all of you here today. And for those that are watching us on TV and the internet, we welcome you with a very special way being part of the faith community. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, be with all of you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sinfulness so we might be more prepared to celebrate these mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life, amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those who were pleased to make new and holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles. And he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord and with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, I will bless you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will bless you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will fulfill my vows before those who fear the Lord. The lowly shall eat their fill. They who seek the Lord shall praise him. 
May your hearts live forever. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nation shall bow down before him. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. To him alone, to him alone shall bow down all who sleep in the earth. Before him shall bend all who go down into the dust. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. And to him my soul shall live, my descendants shall serve him. Let the coming generation be told to the Lord that they may proclaim to the people yet to be born the justice he has shown. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he has commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord be with you. A reading for the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit and every one that does he prunes so it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because the word that I spoke to you remain in me and as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains in the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into the fire and they will be burnt. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you may bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> There's a thinking today that's quite common especially among younger people. They seem to feel that they don't need church. They don't need to go there. They convince themselves that they are good people and they help others and they say they believe in God, but they don't need to be part of church. And so they don't bother to go. Perhaps some might even have a grudge they've had in the past that someone may have hurt them or offended them. 
Jesus' words of the gospel today are a reminder of how important it is to remain connected with church. Because too often when people drift away from the church, they can start making up their own rules, they can follow their own ways, convince themselves that they have nothing to fear because they have been guaranteed heaven and salvation. When in fact, the church is really here to tell us that we're wrong, to call us to correction and conversion. For those that cannot come, we have this mass and we have Eucharistic ministers and others that will keep you in contact with the church. And it's important because otherwise we become like the branch cut off and we wither and we die. For us, this is a lesson that we must remember. That is for us to remind those that do not come to our church and join with us that they are risking a very serious life without the Lord. And without that serious life without the Lord, they will find themselves spiritually in peril. They may convince themselves at first that they're doing wonderful work and that they don't need church, but in fact, they need it very much so. Because the church is the source, not only of the gifts of the sacraments and the graces that come from that, but also it is a challenge for us to love those who we do not necessarily agree with or like. It is always a challenge for us to take up that role and to live in a new way. That is when, when we face these issues and face difficulties or things that we don't like, we become like the branch that needs to be pruned. Once we take those away, we can grow more in our faith. May we always remind ourselves of how important the faith is and pass that on to others. For those that cannot come because of difficulty of age or illness, that they should remind others of how important the gift of the church is and the gift of being attached to the vine. For without it, we cannot live. May we be mindful that God is calling us constantly to being people of the church, to be people of love, to be attached to Christ, not just of our own nature, thinking ourselves to being good and not needing God's graces, but rather to constantly remind ourselves of the goodness of God's love in our lives. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in a Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living of the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. Loving God, confident that you know our hearts and hear our prayers, we bring forth our petitions this day. For God's church, may she remain always close to the Lord and his holy will, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For government leaders and those in positions of power, may they serve others selflessly and seek first the path of collaboration and cooperation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who grow the food we eat, may their fields be blessed with gentle rain and temp temperate weather. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those gathered here today and for all those we love, 
may we abide ever more closely in the Lord and bear good fruit for the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. And for those who have died, may they bask in the light of the Lord in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we trust that you will hear and answer these and all our prayers in your time and according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Amen. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but above all at this time to laud you ever more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he's destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit 
may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, with the blessed, with the blessed Mar Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints that whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and John our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercies we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please share that sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. 
would like to thank all of you today who've come to gather with us, especially all of those who helped out with the uh, Eucharist today. We appreciate your help, and we especially send a greeting to all of those who are watching us on TV, those that cannot get out of their homes or are bound to healthcare facilities. Know that you are still very much a part of our church, and this broadcast is meant to make sure that you remain within the context of church, and as well as Eucharistic ministers or the priests that will bring you communion. We want you to know that you are never left behind but you are always part of our faith community. And so we as a people of God always remind ourselves of how important it is to be bonded together in unity. Just as the first reading to today said, that the community was of one mind and one heart. When we are of that way, we will constantly be joined together in the faith and remember how important the faith is to all peoples. May we always work in harmony with others, knowing that it is for the good of the church and for the good of the Lord himself, who has founded it and made sure we all live in perfect peace. May our joy be with you always. And for the little ones during the season when they will be receiving their first communion, may they re be reminded of how wonderful it is to be part of this faith community and sharing in that wonderful gift of the Eucharist with all of us. For that is what we do in our church, is to share. That is what the Lord has taught us May we continue to do that every day. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Good morning. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday's televised Mass. I hope it has brought you spiritual joy and comfort this day. Our broadcast cannot continue without your support. Please consider sending a donation to TV Mass at Post Office Box 588, Winona, Minnesota 55987.